So in this video, I wanted to talk about the adiabatic operation, so how you would apply the energy balance if your reactor is operating adiabatically, and then also show you an example problem of how you would apply this for both a PFR and a CSTR. And this is the, going back to this book, the Elements of Chemical Reaction Engineering. This is the first equation in, if you look at table 8-1 on page 476, this is the first equation, adiabatic, so Q is equal to zero, and this applies to a CSTR, PFR, batch, or PBR. And then one thing you want to keep in mind is the equations in this table are Assuming that your work is zero, you have a constant CPI and delta C sub P is zero. So the, the two that you might encounter that more commonly is, first of all, your work might not be zero, and then you'd have to go back to one of these previously to the general energy balance and that has to work in it. And also delta C sub P might not be zero. So just keep that in mind when you're using that equation. So going back to the general energy balance, this is the equation I just derived in the, in the video for the steady state energy balance. And so this equation was Q minus the work minus F A naught multiplied by the sum of theta I C P I T minus T I naught minus the heat of reaction at some reference temperature plus delta C sub P T minus T R and this is multiplied by F A naught X is equal to zero. So the next thing we want to do, because we're aiming for the equation on that first equation in table 8-1, is we assume that the work is zero, so work is zero, and we're also going to assume that all of the reactants are entering the reactor at the same temperature. So I'm going to say that Ti naught is equal to T naught. And then I'm also, since this is adiabatic operation, Q is also zero. So Q equals zero. And so if you do that, so this is zero, this is zero, then we get that X, and so I'm setting, I'm solving for X. So I'm solving for this. And I'm gonna say that this is X EB, and that EB stands for energy balance. And the reason why I want to specify that is because we also have the, we can also calculate the conversion from the mole balance, and so we want to specify how the conversion was calculated. So XEB is equal to the sum of theta I CPI T minus T naught over the heat of reaction at some reference temperature plus delta C sub P T minus TR. And so this equation applies to CSTR PFR PBR and batch. When these two, when well, when this is true, when the work is zero and when Q is zero. So another assumption that's often made is this term is often negligible because it's usually really small compared to this term. So, so if this if this term is zero, or if you like if this term is negligible, then the plot of your conversion plot of temperature versus conversion will be linear. But just for now, I'm going to 
leave that in there, but I believe that the equation in the book, so yeah, the equation on page, in table 8-1 is assuming that delta C sub P is zero. So just make sure that it is zero if you're using that equation. So then we can solve this equation for temperature. And if we do that, we get that temperature is equal to X multiplied by heat of reaction at some reference plus theta I CPI T naught plus X delta C sub P TR and this is all over sum theta I CPI plus X oops, X delta C sub P and then this is the equation that you couple with the differential mole balance when you're when you're solving these problems so if you remember this equation FA naught dx dt is equal to minus ra xt. So when you solve your differential mole balance, or in the case of a CSTR, that'll be algebraic, but basically when you solve your mole balance, your rate of reaction will now be, will now be a function of t as well. And so now I want to go through an example of how you would apply this energy balance to the types of problems we've already been doing. And I'm planning on doing that for both uh, a PFR or PBR because the equations are the same for those or and also for a CSTR. So just so you can kind of see how this works. So I'm going to erase some stuff real quick and then do that. So first the First of all, this is a adiabatic PFR or PBR. And we're going to use the following reaction. So we have A, it's a reversible reaction, A to B. So the first thing you want to do is a mole balance. And so for a PFR, you have dx dv is equal to minus ra over fa naught. And then if you had a PBR, this would be dx dw is equal to minus ra over fa naught. So then you want to write your rate law. And so that is minus ra is equal to kca minus CB over KC. And then since we have uh, potential temperature changes, the reaction rate constants are, if you remember, the reaction rate constants are dependent on temperature. So you have K is equal to K1 at whatever temperature that is, multiplied by the exponent E over R, 1 over T1 minus 1 over T, and then KC is equal to KC2 T2 multiplied by the exponent of heat of reaction over R multiplied by 1 over T2 minus 1 over T. And then next we want to do stoichiometry. And also, this is gas phase. But I'm assuming that epsilon equals 0 and there's no pressure drop, so P equals P naught. So then I have CA is equal to CA naught 1 plus x multiplied by t naught over t and I have cb is equal to ca naught 
x multiplied by t naught over t. And so this, this isn't new. I mean, if you remember, we the original equation we had derived looks something like this. So c naught equals c a naught 1 plus x over 1 plus epsilon x. And then if, if you remember, it was multiplied by p over p naught and then t naught over t. And up until now, we had been assuming that t naught was equal to t. So then this was equal to 1. And then in this case, we're, for this one, we're assuming that p is equal to p naught. So in this case, that's equal to 1. And then we just said epsilon is equal to 0. So that's, that's how you get this equation. And so that's why when I originally derived this and I've been writing the equations, I would often still write the t naught over t in the equation, even if it was 1, just to remind myself that it's there. So then you can combine this stuff. So combine. And so, and uh, actually I'm going to do the energy balance first. Because if you're solving this on the computer, or if you're solving this numerically, you might not even combine these because you would just type the equations in like this. So the last step is the energy balance. So T is equal to T naught plus heat of reaction x over theta i cpi. So this equation, they are, if you remember, they are assuming that q is 0, because it's adiabatic, work is 0. And in this case, we're also assuming that delta c sub p is equal to 0. And so if, and this delta c sub p equals 0, it, in this case we're assuming it's 0, but it might not be 0. And so in that case, if it was not 0, then I'm going to just write the equation over here real quick. Then you would have t is equal to x multiplied by heat of reaction at some reference temperature plus the sum of theta i cpi t naught plus delta c sub p multiplied by t reference, and that's all over the sum of theta i cpi plus x delta c sub p. And so then you can see how if delta c sub p was 0, you would get this equation. And going back, this, this equation is the one that we derived from the general energy balance, and then the one on the table took this equation and said delta C sub P is equal to zero, and they got this. So just keep that in mind when you're applying your energy balances, because if delta C sub P wasn't zero, and then you use this equation, it wouldn't be right, because you would need to use that one. So just make sure you're really clear about what your assumptions are. And that's why I think it's really helpful to actually go through and derive these on your own, because then you have a better idea of which equation to use and when they apply or don't apply. So then you would just take all of this and I would probably want to solve this numerically. So you could com you would combine this, well, so you would combine this into the rate law and k and t, and then you, you could solve this differential equation numerically using either polymath or MATLAB. So I'm going to go through this again and just write down the CSTR next to this stuff, just so you can kind of see the comparison. So 
Now let's assume that you have a CSTR and you have the same reaction. So first of all, you, so this is PFR or PBR and I'll write CSTR right here. So this is a CSTR mole balance and you should know by now that the mole balance is different for a CSTR. So that's V is equal to FA naught X over the rate. So then coming down, the rate laws are the same. And the stoichiometry, the stoichiometry is the same, assuming that this is still gas. If this were a liquid, then, so this is gas. If this were a liquid, then CA, whoops, then CA is equal to CA naught. This is one minus X. This is equal to one minus X. So, and then CB is equal to CA naught X. So this is for liquid, this is for gas. And the energy balance would also be the same in this case. So the I guess the main difference between these is your mole balance and then depending on if you have gas or liquid, what your stoichiometry is. So this is why stepping through these problems in an ordered way makes things a lot easier because it's you're dealing with a lot of equations and so going through in an ordered manner like mole balance, rate law, stoichiometry, and then energy balance or taking a step back to when we had the pressure drop you would have pressure drop, energy balance, whatever. The, I think it just makes it a lot easier. So anyway, that's all I'm going to say about this.